Welcome to We the People, the show by the people, for the people. Our first guest tonight representing the left, the executive producer and host of Idiot Test, Ben Glebe. Also representing the left, you've seen her on The Mindy Project and Franklin and Bad, actress and comedian, Jen Kober. Representing the right, from Punchlines on Fox and retired United States Marine, Mitch Burrow. And finally, from Comedy Central's Stand Up Revolution and the host and creator of the Unbothered Podcast, Ty Rivera. And now, please welcome the host of We the People, Michael Malone. on the right, and we are not going to leave until we fix this country. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah, yeah. You guys love America? Yeah. You fix this country? Yeah. I'm going to go down. No, going down. Showtime special called Neurotic Gangster. Please welcome the stage, Mr. Ben Glee. <laughs> Our next guest, you've seen her on shows like The Mindy Project and Franklin and Bash, and she just won NPR's uh, Snap Judgment Comedian of the Year. Please welcome to the stage, Jim Cover. <laughs> Representing the right, you've seen him on Comedy Central Stand Up Revolution. You've also seen him on the Logo Network's uh, One Night Stand Up. Please welcome to the stage, Ty Rivera. <laughs> album on XM Radio. He's a U.S. Marine. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Mitch Burrow. Uh, I want to tell everybody before we start, every panel member is armed with these fact check cards. So if they feel like somebody is full of shit or they're spreading fake news, they can call fact check and our lovely founding father, King Gar, over there will read it. I've got AOL. We're good to go. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I feel like if you ever want to use it on the, you saying I was in the Marine Corps. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your aim name you're working with? Pussy Crusher 64. <laughs> <laughs> I lost five fingers already. <laughs> I said that in a suit. <laughs> and America's fixed. <laughs> start with one of our favorite segments called, uh, Can We All Agree? Uh, this week in the news, I'm sure you've seen Harvey Weinstein. Um, if you have a television or internet or a daughter, you know what's going on. Uh, he's been accused of some really bad uh, sexual abuse and allegations going on. And Woody Allen actually uh, spoke up against him. But uh, can we all agree? That, uh, and he's a fucking scumbag. Can we agree on this? Absolutely. Okay. Woody Allen lightly spoke up against him. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hedging his bets a little bit. <laughs> You're fucking up when Woody Allen comes out of the woodwork. You know what I mean? He actually, he commented, he said, he, he saw the women coming forward, and Woody Allen, he came forward and he said, uh, it's a tragedy. It's a, it's a true tragedy. These women are so old. Gross. <laughs> well, also, Harvey Weinstein, he, he, of course, is a horrible scumbag, and all these stories came out, and it was like, Double bad for him because also it 
all the stories are like, and and I said no, I left. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, and then I left. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get started. Uh, our first topic tonight is DACA, uh, which if you don't know what that stands for, is the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. It's a policy that uh, was put into place in the Obama administration. He actually used his, uh, his executive powers to put it in place, and what it does is it allows undocumented immigrants who came over here as children uh, to register with the government for things like driver's license and, uh, and enroll in college and, you know, life stuff. Uh, but there are rules. You have, to, you have to have been over in this country before you were 16 years old and you have to renew your citizenship every two years. Um, recently, President Trump said that he's going to no longer allow renewals and he's no longer accepting any new enrollees either. So he's pretty much scrapping the entire DACA program even though there's 700,000 children registered with that. Um, so where do we stand? Um, well, the right feels like, well, if you're getting snuck into Six Flags and you get caught, well, you shouldn't be able to stick around and ride all the rides, right? That seems fair. And the left feels like, well, this is all these children know. They grew up here. They've, they've never been anywhere else. And if you deport them back to a country they've never been before, it's fucking cruel, OK? So well, I'm going to start with the right on this. Uh, Ty Rivera, you're, what are you, Ty? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a faggot, thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I am is a good example of how ridiculous the left has gotten. I mean, I'm gay, I'm Mexican, I look Asian. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, a hate crime waiting to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason, I represent right wing politics in the United States right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, being Mexican American, I know a lot of people that are affected by this. At the, you know, so I feel bad for them. At the same time, um, we do have to do something about immigration in this country. It has gotten a little bit ridiculous, and I'm tired of people misrepresenting it. Like people make it seem like these kids are going to go back when the average age is like 25 of right. a DACA recipient. So it's not exactly kids, that's one thing. And the other thing is, I think that the way DACA works out is it leaves a lot of people in limbo, so something definitely needs to be done about it. While it might be inhumane to send somebody back to a country that they're not, they're not the most familiar with, it's also more inhumane, in my opinion, to actually have people here that can't take advantage of a lot of our services because they're not full citizens. So in one way or another, in my opinion, something has to be done about it. And it's really been kicked back to Congress, which it kind of is their job to take care of that at this point. They've had 15 years to think about it. Um, now they're being given another six months, and people make it seem like, you know, that it's only six months, but it's actually 15 years and six months. Has it been 15 years? That yeah. 15 yeah. years. <clears throat> I agree something has to be done, but why is your answer to send people back? Was weren't we all? Wasn't this the motion we had when we started this shit? <laughs> some people, some people definitely can stay. I, I don't know who gets to pick. Now you get to play God and pick which which brown people are welcome and which aren't. No, I think we can decide um, by what it is they're doing, what it is they've done. Have people been in trouble? Let me I mean, ask like, you this: Would you get to stay? Well, <laughs> being that I'm a United States But if you weren't, if you weren't, if somebody that was, but if I mean somebody that was a comedian, somebody might consider that a fuck off job. I'm serious. Somebody might well, consider not just like that. If you're saying that we have to do something about immigration, everybody agrees with that. But DACA is what the one program that has a group of, of people living here who are the ones that are the lowest priority to deport because DACA recipients have to have no criminal record. They have to be enrolled in high school or have a, co or have a high school diploma at the very least. And so those are the people that we should all be able to agree on both sides. It was originally a Republican idea, a very similar program. The DREAM Act was really introduced by Orrin Hatch, who's a Republican. So that should at least be something we say, yes, let's figure out where we meet left and right and on immigration. But DACA should be a temporary program until it gets codified into law. But we shouldn't get rid of it as a solution to to not get rid of it. <laughs> Can I, I just say uh, I feel terrible because I thought we were going to be debating Dada, uh, <laughs> which is defense against the dark arts. Bad wizards would lead them into wanting to do it themselves. 
sales, so I feel really out of place here. I believe, though, Donald Trump does want to train young wizards. <laughs> Congress to do their job. And I think the problem is when you're a boss, you have to make people do things they don't want to do, right? Look, I was a manager at Boeing, and you do things that upset people sometimes, right? Like you got to give them overtime, or you got to deport them, right? It just makes people upset. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 sorry to interrupt, but the, the, the problem with that is that Donald Trump sees everything in these in humane, cold ways. This isn't a business. You're not just deciding about how much wrapping to put on a package. You're dealing with human lives. So if Congress can't get things done, and they don't, and they most likely won't in this six-month period, you're actually taking 800,000 human lives and saying, we're going to put you into limbo and make you not be able to continue your job. Legally, they have to unregister from their jobs. They make them have to not know if they can stay in the country or not, have to make plans to leave the country, all because you're saying, well, it's not working, so tell Congress they're going to do it. They're going to do it now, or they don't do it. How about just say you do it now, because once they don't do it, they're still going to live in the country. They're, they're just in limbo live in now, though. So they're in limbo now. They're not allowed to take advantage of a lot of the, the services that we have. Like they're not a, When it comes to welfare, when it comes to student loans, a lot of that stuff they're not eligible for. So really, so then what's your problem? <laughs> what? Why are you taking advantage of the system? Why do you care if they stay? Well, first off, um, I'm Mexican. You're a white woman with a southern accent. Right? <laughs> Which, so. I, I, on, on that point too, this is very confusing to me too. <laughs> <laughs> because every time she speaks, I feel like I'm supposed to agree with her. <laughs> saying to these kids, these aren't kids you're talking about, they're 25 now, you know, they're, they're grown-ups. So what about, you know, we cut off an age limit at 10? Because at 10 you don't know anybody, you're still a kid, so and maybe we can... Yeah, but if you're 11, get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> can, I can, I propose, to shit? can I propose a different solution? Yes. We take a reasonable program like DACA, which has in it the, the undocumented immigrants that I think all four of us agree are not the problems in immigration. I think we all agree there are definitely some illegal immigrants that come here that we should deport from the country. So can we agree we should focus our deportation efforts on those people and let DACA stay until something like this is put into law? Because you're saying you think something like this should be put into law. Okay, what about this? American citizens versus DACA recipients, uh, and we see who loves the country more. Almost like <laughs> <laughs> Madison. Uh, so, uh, what about, what about my, what about we my proposals? You better study. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, that's I, I think you're right. I I just, it's better, I, again, like, let's make it a legal law and, and, and get it done. I think that's kind of what we really need to do. Down with that. Yeah. So can we agree legal law in place? And yes. <laughs> I think we should do a legal law for sure. <laughs> <laughs> let's do a legal law, not a legal law. Let me, uh, let me fact check that real quick. Oh, it turns out all laws are legal. Cool. <laughs> Well, by the time the future comes, there's been another mass shooting. Exactly. Yeah, we're in this endless cycle, right? Trust and so, so that's the problem: is this this idea of stricter gun laws always exists in this hypothetical future where we have hoverboards and flying cars and things, and we're just stuck in these debates. And there's there's five stages to American gun debate. Stage one: a mass shooting happens, and everybody gets sad and outraged. Stage two: uh, there's no overwhelming majority speaks up, and they and they want stricter gun laws. Stage three. They tell us that now is not the time to talk about stricter gun laws. Stage four, we all just kind of move on. And then stage five, hey, the bachelor's on. <laughs> so the idea of gun reform is such a big idea. How do you even get into it? That's the problem. It's such a huge undertaking right now. 
So where do we even stand on it? The right says that they don't want stricter gun laws because limiting any kind of their freedom to have a gun or any guns is just the beginning. What else can the government take away from them after they start with that? And they don't have their guns to fight back. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the left, well, the left wants you to know that we're not going to take all your guns. We don't want all of your, not all of them. We just want to introduce some gun reform that would, you know, uh, prevent some gun violence in America and mass shootings. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, being believed on this one on the left. Is now the time to talk about gun reform? No, I think never is the time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, this is such a bananas issue that we allow political interests, we basically allow the NRA to hold the country hostage and to not allow us to talk about something that the overwhelming, like you said, majority of Americans agree we must take action on. So it's, it's, an, it's insane on many levels. First of all, to say it's not the right time to talk about it in the immediate aftermath of these shootings makes no sense because all the news does is talk about it. Right. We're talking about it. All the country talks about is that. The lawmakers all talk about it. Yet they just aren't supposed to have productive talks. They're just supposed to cycle on as though the best way to honor the lives of the people who were slain by insane people is let's just give thoughts and prayers and do absolutely nothing to prevent this from happening in the future. Is that what they would want? No sane person would possibly think that. So of course then is the time. You're not trying to do worse harm. I think it's not the time to like encourage like free mass shootings that weekend, right. you know? But we need, that's of course the time you talk about it. It's the only time it's in the national conversation. And especially also because, like you said about The Bachelor, it presupposes saying that's not the time to talk about it, but just mourn. Like there aren't still millions of people watching every other show on television, on Instagram all of those days. Of course you are. So if you're doing other things, it's more productive and respectful to those slain to actually talk about the issue and try to fix it. On the right, when is the, when is the right time? I mean, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face. You know, I think the problem is, is that people are so dead set on what they want that they don't want to give anything up. And I think that if, if you want reform laws, I, I think it's fine. It just needs to be like something sensible Right? So like people with mental health issues make it harder for them to get guns. And you don't have to go into people's medical records or anything like that. It's simple. If you've ever worn socks with sandals, <laughs> you don't get a magazine with a capacity over eight rounds. <laughs> and, and this is going to upset a lot of people on the right, but if you now have, or since middle school, have ever had a mullet, you don't get a gun at all. <laughs> the sound is out. <laughs> I got shot in a drive-by when I was 16, so um, I would have been fine with people talking about it back then. Um, as far as, uh, like, I agree that mental health in this country, people need to put more of a focus on that in, in a lot of cases. And I'm, like, this is one you won't get an argument with or from me about, you know, like, I think we need to do something about guns. I don't know exactly what that is, but something needs to be done about it, because you know, we can't have another Vegas today. We just had the situation in Maryland. It's like things are always happening in this country when it comes to guns, so something needs to be done, in my opinion. And also just the fact that we, as you said in your intro, people are afraid, oh, well, if they do some gun control, then they're going to take all of our guns, as though suddenly Congress is going to become so efficient. Laws just roll out of the country. Where did all these 20 different laws come from? One law, if you're lucky, passes. And it'll be 40 years till any other laws pass. Now, legal laws you're talking about? Legal laws. Those are dangerous. So we can agree that, uh, that uh, we should put something in place like you do with uh, your driver's license and renting a car and, and all these other things that have uh, kind of a step-by-step -step process and make it tougher to buy guns instead of just being like, hey, I think I'll buy an assault rifle today. It's Tuesday morning. Well, didn't he buy, didn't the Vegas shooter, he bought guns and then he... Bump stocks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. For yeah. Which, <laughs> which I, I also think like so something like that. Uh, there's, I mean, there's no practical use for it. Look, I, I own guns. I, I hunt. Uh, I, I go to the range. If bump stocks basically turn a semi-automatic weapon into a fully automatic weapon, and if you want to put those in a gun range so people can go and experience it uh, under like a, an observed setting. I think that's fine, but 
you know, just letting anyone have something like that, it, I think, is a little ex extreme. E even I can say that on on the right, but yeah. don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> bump, yeah, I mean, bump stocks basically Viagra for your gun. It just makes it do what it was never intended by God. <laughs> They're one of our sponsors. <laughs> so I, I just, how about this for a solution on the, on, on the middle of that? I agree we should make it harder for people that with mental illness to get guns. What do you say? We already have a national uh, background check on guns, but not, but only from gun dealers, not from private gun sales. So that's just a bullshit lie. You're basically saying you can, I must have a background check to get a gun, except 50% of sales. <laughs> <laughs> then you can't. So let's just do a universal background check because individual states can't have tougher ones. People cross state lines right. and they get their gun next door. It undercuts Trump's argument. Chicago has very strict gun laws, but look very bad. Yeah, because they go to Indiana five minutes away and they buy guns. There's no background check. Yeah, but to go to Indiana, like, they really want those guns. Have you been to Indiana? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Give you have five fireworks, right? <laughs> <laughs> so how about just to start with universal background check on all gun purchases, private, public, gun shows, whatever. No bump stocks that make guns not be what the guns are supposed to be. And keep guns out of the hands of crazy people. Is that a middle ground? I think so. Do you agree on that? Ben, I am just really starting to rethink a lot of my life choices. <laughs> <laughs> Brain. Well, pray the game way didn't work, so now we're going to politic it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, guys, let's move on to uh, our segment. Uh, our, our segment. Uh, can we all agree? Uh, in 19, since 1998, uh, 740 children have died by being left inside of hot cars. That's roughly 38 kids a year. Uh, can we all agree that stop leaving our kids in hot cars? <laughs> <laughs> Are these kids dreamers? <laughs> how about how about warm cards? <laughs> warm cards. We'll meet the middle. Warm cards. I mean, you wouldn't do it to your iPhone. Why are you doing it to your stuff? That's a strong point. <laughs> fully functioning members of society in hot cars, but the kids, you know, it's whatever. Like, yeah, teach them figure out the fucking lock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this week, Colin Kaepernick filed a grievance against NFL owners. Uh, his agent reportedly reached out to all 32 teams and made, his, uh, made him know that his, he was available, and that he still remains a free agent. As you all know, the quarterback started kneeling during the national anthem to protest of police brutality. And the NFL keeps going back and forth with this. They keep saying, yes, it's okay, no, it's not, yes, it is. And then uh, President Trump went on a Twitter tirade uh, recently, and the NFL sided with him. It's no longer okay to kneel during uh, the NFL games. But, I mean, how progressive... Well, they didn't say that. They said you should stand, but they didn't make a rule change. I think they're about to. No, no. I, I think about. the Supreme Court made this. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be penalized yeah. at your job if you choose to not participate in patriotic acts. Yep. Yeah. That's a law. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, coach for the Dallas Cowboys who said it all. Well, he can say, he can go in that locker room and be like, boys, <laughs> let me say one thing right now. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, right. that's a, Jerry that's Jones, a different thing. Also they the still one. kneeled, just not during the National Anthem. Yeah, and Jerry and Jones kneeled. is the one, he kneeled with them. Yeah. Which is the only time I got upset because I was afraid he wouldn't be able to get back up. <laughs> 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 I expect NFL owners to be progressive. I mean, they're, they're, they, they're called owners. Football <laughs> 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 players are the only people in the world that, that can't go, that's my boss. They have to go, that's my owner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> in Mississippi in 1850. <laughs> So, so where do we stand on it? So, so the right feels like um, that it's disrespecting the military. That they're saying there's a lot of brave men and women who, who died and fought for this country, and you stand for the national anthem. And the people on the left, well, they feel like uh, this is exactly what those people fought and died for. For your choice to either stand or kneel, or pick your nose, or do whatever you want during the national anthem. It's the First Amendment. Um, so I'm going to start with Mitch on this one on the right. You're a U.S. Marine. Is it 
disrespecting the military to, to, to kneel? Yeah, look, I uh, I was in the Marine Corps from 1999 to 2003, and I was part of the first group that went into Iraq. And I will say this, I did not go to Iraq so that people wouldn't be able to practice their constitutional rights. And I also didn't go there so that we would have to pay more for gasoline. <laughs> and <laughs> considering how it's almost $4 a gallon, kneeling right now is about the only thing that we got out of that war, right? So, <laughs> I loved being in the Marine Corps, uh, mainly because I wasn't fat, but it's, <laughs> I, I keep in touch with a lot of my old Marine buddies, uh, I have a lot of family that's in the military, and no, no veteran that I know is like, they're disrespecting me, you know, like, it, I, I, I don't, that argument isn't coming from veterans, I think that argument is coming from people who think they're supporting veterans mm -hmm. and active duty people, right? But I will say, kneeling in the NFL is a problem uh, when there's 30 seconds on the clock left and you're down by three. Yes. <laughs> Get rid of that. Let's keep the action going. Yes. How do you guys feel? Do you think it's disrespectful to the military? Do you think it's free? I, I don't see how that's the conclusion that you go to. That I mean, that, that was the whole point. It, this whole country was founded on diversity. If he feels one way, he is welcome to kneel. If you don't, stand your ass up and sing. I mean, that's the point. Uh -huh. This blows my mind. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. The number of irrational thought processes that Donald Trump has like hypnotized the country into having is just mind-boggling. Who goes on their knees and loses a job? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Because why? It's a free country. It's the very basis of America. In totalitarian countries, it's where you are forced to stand for an anthem. <laughs> North Korea, you get shot if you're not immediately in sync with your 12 bodies standing up for the anthem. So of course you're allowed. It's ridiculous that you must stand. What is disrespectful to the country is not supporting the people. But the, the effort, the, the most, uh, you see my point? <laughs> So frustrated, can't even talk anymore. Whoever, of course, we should honor our flag if we're proud of America. But how could anybody argue that that is more important than honoring the values of the country, right. which is being protested by the people who aren't having their freedoms, their rights protected by that very country? God, that you just get sexier by the minute. <laughs> you don't know these fucking dudes for the next twenty years. After. I mean, it's just incredibly obvious. That that's what America is. Any free country, you have the right to protest that country. And obviously, what's not allowed in the country is undermining the very fabric of the country, as Trump does every day by saying our courts are biased, by saying our elections are rigged, by letting Russia fuck our elections, by fucking doing everything he can, at all saying our, our news is fake, even saying just facts are up for grabs now. Those are treasonous right, fucking right. activity. <laughs> <laughs> Kneeling for a fucking anthem? <laughs> <laughs> That's almost the problem I have with it, though, is that people have started to make it seem like if players don't kneel, then that means they're against what it is or the reason that he's kneeling. Where some people just feel like, I just want to play and I want to stay out of it. So when black players are considered sellouts for not kneeling, and then white players are considered racist for not kneeling, that's where it becomes a little bit too divisive to me, where it becomes like, okay, now this is affecting the NFL's bottom line, and it's also making people argue. So I can kind of understand why they want people to stand. I don't think they should force people to, but at the same time, I understand why. Because you, you didn't win. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that uh, people on the right say that it, it doesn't show unity. It shows diversity in a, in a bad way. It shows that but it's more divisive. A, in the it's a problem. Yeah. 
Yeah, but not <laughs> doing it for made up reason. It's for legitimate grievances. Yeah, it's so, not like I. You know what? I don't like you today, and I'm a Neo, and I'm a. Pow. It's not a. It's not a powerful right, thing. Right. This is like these players aren't saying. And I don't, you can't kneel. The most peaceful. I'm, they're not touching anybody. They are kneeling. If you can't do that, what the hell can you do? Yeah, I'm fine with it. It's just not fair to ask people. Like if I ask people to kneel every time I knelt. <laughs> <laughs> Then you just be kissing each other. <laughs> and I dare somebody to fact check me on that. I mean, look, there's the, the player for the Pittsburgh Steelers right. who was uh, an Army Ranger, and uh, his team decided to stay in in the tunnel during right. the national anthem, and he went out and stood with his hand over his heart. That For that guy, that's a real simple thing to go, look, I was in the military, I, I have a lot of pride in it, like, I'm going to go do it. But for someone who's just like, you know, I love America, like Ty saying, if that guy goes against his team, then he looks like an asshole. Right. So, I mean, it's... it's so, what about this? What about not playing the national anthem before a football game? <laughs> as long as we still do it before the national anthem, I'm so okay. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you, buddy. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. <laughs> Couple of quick mics. Yeah, they're already playing football in London for God's sake. <laughs> now you're making it insane. Couple of quick facts. The national anthem wasn't actually uh, done until 2009 in the NFL. And the NFL charges the Department of Defense uh, upwards of uh, $10 million per year to uh, shake the flag and say the national anthem. All right, I'm out. <laughs> for a bunch of reasons. I'm a fiscal Republican. Yeah, so how, about, how about just respect? Freedom of speech and let people do what they want to do, and then make your judgments. Anything trying to Why make can't us that just like Carrie Underwood saying at the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she can say it. Look, but I, I, I would never personally kneel to a national anthem because, despite all of our flaws, I love this country. But what I love about it is people's right to kneel. Right. All right. Let me ask, let me ask you this. If Four they, people on that. If they don't, <laughs> if they don't Strong. do the national anthem anymore. Will the Blue Angels still fly over? Yeah. <laughs> Blue Angels still in the bus. All right, I'm okay with it. Here's the idea here, read the people. So you take the national anthem away, and you take the uh, the uh, the 6.1 million. Is that what it was? That's so correct. 6.1 million dollars away from the NFL for folding the flag like a bed sheet, and you uh, you put that money towards cancer research, and you put that money towards communities, and and feeding homeless people, and stuff that America actually needs rather than. Uh, how about we blame the national anthem? How, how about we put put it into uh, better police training and uh, put more budget into <laughs> into charge the government six million dollars to fold a flag. Let's get rid of that bullshit. Play the anthem, stand if you want, don't stand if you want, and then play ball. I think it's right. very interesting that they didn't play it until 2009. Yeah. That really says something, right? It's not this like ingrained in us thing. It's, yeah. it's 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 like a now thing. Like it was a why did they tool. feel what happened in 2009 that they're like we gotta start playing this fucking anthem. They we were, gotta get it out more. We were like look we can either bring back the draft Yep. Or we can play the national anthem before, before football games. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. How about this? How about you play a draft? <laughs> yes. Anthem. How about you play the national anthem, and then whoever kneels has to play the game against the people who don't kneel, and you turn into like a civil war. <laughs> Georgia, and the last time there was a civil war, <laughs> we didn't end up too good. <laughs> so I don't really like well, that. Well, don't worry, you guys are still fighting it. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a shot yet. You might, you might be okay, so let's now. let's keep the national anthem, take the money away to play. Let's just say the government just has to play it, and we'll put that money towards a better police training in the community. <laughs> Uh, we're going to end tonight with a, with a segment uh, we call My Aunt Judy's Fake News. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with this crazy news 
cycle that we're living I'm in. I'm going to go fact check because you said Aunt Judy. That says Aunt Julie. So what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 What kind of nephew doesn't know his own aunt's name? I can see the fake news she's posted. <laughs> so what's the story behind Aunt Julie? What's the story behind Aunt Julie? Uh, so I, have, I really do have an Aunt Julie back in Ohio, and she posts the most ridiculous things. It makes my head explode almost every morning when I'm just scrolling through Facebook. So I thought, uh, if I can't, if other people on her feet, because people are agreeing with it, they're liking it, they're sharing it, and if they can't tell if it's real or not, who can? And I'm curious to see if our panel could pick out what are real headlines. Sim so aren't. Let me just say, similarly, I look at my computer every day and explode. <laughs> <laughs> And all of a sudden, the attraction is gone. <laughs> Uh, all of these headlines you're about to see are published headlines, and they're out there in the world getting passed around. Um, so I'm going to show you three headlines at a time that are published, are getting passed around, and all you have to do is tell me which one is the real headline. All right. Uh, three Florida men were arrested for eating human flesh, a practice they claim cures depression and diabetes. <laughs> Florida's got it. Massive job listings seeks help protecting the Earth from aliens. The last one here is Democrat Maxine Waters has only shown up for 10% of her congressional meetings in the past 35 years. Okay, so we have three Florida men are eating people to help with their diabetes. NASA's looking for people to help uh, protect us from aliens. Democrat Maxine Waters has only shown up to 10% of her meetings in 35 years. Uh, I'm going to start with Jen. Which one is the real story here? <laughs> I feel like the Florida is too obvious. <laughs> right? And I feel like if, if I thought eating human flesh cured diabetes, y'all, I'd have all one of you in a lot. <laughs> Earth from aliens? Mm, would they say that in a job listing? <laughs> like, would they go that? Like, I feel like I, I don't feel like NASA's like on Craigslist. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they they do that, and if you reply, you don't get to buy a gun. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maxine Waters is black. <laughs> fact. It's a fact. So I believe it if it said she was late to all of them. <laughs> no, I'm going to go 
go with Florida. I think Florida is the actual story. Okay, just, so Florida, Florida, yeah, Maxine. The act, only one is real. Only one is real. <laughs> it is. It is. It is NASA. It is NASA. NASA. <laughs> Good job. It pays up to one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars and comes with benefits. And then all they make you do is pull the flag before it goes. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, Will Smith has been given a job. So <laughs> what does that mean? Tell you is that by aliens they mean doctor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Round two. Here we go. Uh, the internet freaks out over 19th century books featuring a boy named Baron Trump. <laughs> NASA confirms that Earth will experience 15 days of darkness in November 2017. And Trump just ended Obama's vacation scam. He sent him a bill. You got a C to believe. We're <laughs> <laughs> golfing, Obama. <laughs> All well, right. aren't there 15 days of darkness just collectively in a month? <laughs> 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 which one? I'm gonna start with you on this one. Which, uh, which one's the real story here? I don't know, but I gotta start reading more, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am at a disadvantage. Um, <laughs> Well, George is still fighting that one, too. <laughs> I believe Trump would have put that on Twitter if it had happened. Okay. He would have tweeted that, Bill. All right, so which one's real? Which one's the real story? The real... Oh, are we going in order? Or we just, uh, what, what comes Trump vacation, yeah. Baron Trump, or well, 15 look, Days no, of I'll say this. Trump's a businessman. Okay, and he's, he, he's all about money. Yes. So I could definitely... And he's petty. Okay, and he had, it's okay. I voted for Gary Johnson. It's all right. I don't mind. I, I didn't want my vote to matter. But here's the thing. Uh, I think just to kind of like stick it to him a little bit more. He, I think he sent the bill. I think, I think, so he, think sent he sent Obama, Obama, Obama a bill, bill. for okay. sure. Jen, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure the fact is 15 days of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> In Alaska, yeah, for sure, but all over the world. I just feel like if you add you say a half time, yeah. It's half of the day. Yeah. So 30 days, 15 of them are We'll draw you a picture after. <laughs> 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 when I'm in doubt, I look to the lesbian in the room. <laughs> and just go with that. So 15 days of darkness. Days of darkness. Been clean. Um, there's no way that Trump sent Obama a bill for his vacation time. Because, I mean, even Trump doesn't have that little of a grasp on reality. He's, a, he's eclipsed Obama's vacation time in like the first six months more than Obama did basically in the first four years of his presidency. You're underestimating Trump. <laughs> um, but I, all, I, I, I believe that Baron Trump is the real story because it isn't or it is. Oh, don't know. <laughs> I think it's Baron Trump's real story because I think that Trump can't even like come up with like an original name for his children. <laughs> you are correct, Ben. It is. Um, <laughs> uh, is it Google or Amazon, um, it's called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, and it's about a wealthy young boy. Is there a railroad? <laughs> about a wealthy young boy who has uh, who lives in Trump Castle <laughs> and he has a mentor named Don who is known as the master of all masters kind of close to grand wizard and uh, he shows him a portal that goes where to Russia <laughs> this book sounds awesome <laughs> was, it, was it written by Nostradamus <laughs> wrote a pamphlet called The Last President, and it's about uh, a man who is not in politics, a very wealthy man who comes to New York and uh, upsets the political game, and all the cities go into an uproar. And it, I, I this all sounds like bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 18, 19, 18, 19, Amazing 19, bullshit, 19, I will <laughs> say, but Google it. That is awesome. I will. <laughs> all right, last round. Here we go. 
Italian bank robbers wear Trump masks during a heist. <laughs> Boston Marathon. Reports instantly said it was the greatest bank robbery. <laughs> 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 They're already rebooting Point Break again. <laughs> Boston Marathon bomber severely injured in prison and may never walk or talk again. The next Star Wars movie will be filmed near Park City, Utah. Hundreds of extras needed. So here we go. Italian bank robbers with Trump masks. The, bear, uh, the Boston Marathon uh, bomber may never walk or talk again. Or Star Wars in Park City, Utah. Extras needed. Ty Rivera, I'm gonna start with you first on this one. Which one is the, which one is the real? Story? Italian bank robbers sounds a little too easy. <laughs> it, it just seems like it's too likely, so you guys wouldn't throw it in if it was real. Um, Boston Marathon bomber. What he did was terrible, but he's still really cute. <laughs> <laughs> And you both have bullet holes in you. <laughs> All that would have a lot of comments. Um, well, the terrorists have won. <laughs> Your heart. See okay. how he does? <laughs> so I could see making him not be able to walk or talk again. Um, next Star Wars movie. That seems... But are there hundreds of people in Park City, Utah? <laughs> <laughs> They're about to be there. And aren't they the introducing Wars? more diversity to Star Wars? Because <coughs> Park City is a number of diversity. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Star Wars. Star Wars? Jim? Oh, I want to hear what Ben says and then copy him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I might go with the Trump masks. Because okay. I... I mm, Utah, who cares, and, and the bomber, who cares? Mitch? There's a re reason that I don't read the news, and it's because it's boring as shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Park City, Utah, obviously. City. That's the real one. I feel like Kim's giving Jen signals. Right to die. I've gotten everyone wrong. So if he is, I'm the shittiest signal reader. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is it? As a quick aside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying you need to judge what side of the political spectrum you should be on, but the right over there has a guy who doesn't read the news and a gay Mexican that's on that side for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think Trump masks is right is correct. Donald Trump's and they were just being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> That's our show tonight, folks. Thank you guys so much.